Hello again and welcome to another edition of Southern Country. Hi, I'm Herb Southern and welcome to the show, my friends. Today I'm very lucky to say I have Dang Records recording artist, Mr. Steve Azar with me. Welcome to the show, Herb, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Good Pleasure to see you. Pleasure to have you. I've been playing your music for years and it's just, I'm thank glad you. to have you on the show. It's fantastic. Let's thank talk you. about Indianola, your first album on Dang Records. It is. I read where this record is steeped in the imagery and the feel of Mississippi Delta where you grew up. Is that true? It is so true. You know, I... Uh, Took a while to write, took a while to kind of figure out where I wanted to go, but uh, I was on this really big label before, mm -hmm. and we, you know, when I made the Waiting on Joe record, and it just, uh, they weren't allowing me to, to do what I, you know, make the music I wanted to make, and I had this really, uh, I guess, uh, huge influence from where I grew up down in the Mississippi mm -hmm. Delta. Mm -hmm. Anybody that grows up down there, you know, just kind of eventually leaks out of you, and it was time for me really to make a true Delta record, uh, meets, you know, all my influences and uh, inspirations in Nashville, great songwriters I've been around. I've been around a lot of great ones from the Delta to Nashville, and, and it was just uh, time to make this record. Well, you were a writer when you went to Nashville. You started writing right away. Yeah, but, you know, everybody's got their beginnings. My beginning started when I was a kid. Okay. I, mean, I was a teenager, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, playing in blues clubs and and uh, just kind of uh, making music. Had a band full throttle in college. I know, you I couldn't that. even You couldn't even get into the to the venues to see us, and... Uh, and uh, so by the time I, I, there was some tragedy in my, in my, in one of my bands that was with me for a while, a couple, a couple tragedies, and I, I left and went to Nashville. So really, it was a, it, Nashville was really like my second life, okay. second career, so, so to speak. I've had a lot of them. I, mm -hmm. A little Milton told me when I was growing up, he used to hub out of Greenville, Mississippi. He'd be around, and mm -hmm. and he'd say that you know your career is uh, full of more downs and ups, and and hope you know that I've noticed yeah. uh, you have a lot of careers, and and, and he, he was he would always say that. Uh, but uh, I've noticed that you can have the slightest bit of hope can erase so much bad times. That's Just the truth. hope, yeah. even though it doesn't quite work out later, it's enough to kind of keep you going. And, uh, and that's kind of been the, the lesson uh, in life that's kept me going and kept, kept me doing this my whole life. That's called positive attitude. <laughs> yeah, you yeah I tell you, it's tough that our business sometimes have positive Let's attitude. Let's talk about a few of the songs. Okay. You don't know a uh, thing. Yeah, I wrote that with Radney Foster. Radney's a great singer-songwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, I seemed to gel really better writing songs with people that came to town to do what I did, and that was mm -hmm. to be an artist and writer. You know, they'd mm -hmm. write their own songs mm -hmm. and they'd do their thing, and and uh, it just seems to be the, the people that uh, I, I can sit in the room with, and, and they know uh, the difficulty of co-writing and all that, mm -hmm. which is it's not hard anymore, but uh, it, it was a little bit of an oddity coming to town when you've never done it. Uh, but you learn a lot doing it, and uh, and sometimes you get the song done quicker. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, you have something to sh somebody to share it with. You know, I've been watching a lot cool. of Super Bowl uh, hype right now, and everybody's got team, team, team. And I grew up an athlete with with the teammates, yes, you did. Sure and it's did. always fun to have somebody to celebrate a victory with. How about uh, Rivers Working? What kind of song is that? Uh, I was shooting the Waiting on Joe video you for uh, Rivers Working. Uh, it, uh, Morgan Freeman, the video mm -hmm. of him, just did such a great no. job. And they, I remember they were setting up shop on the bridge, the cameras shutting the bridge down, the uh, Mississippi River Bridge where I grew up. And uh, I was on the boat, and the boat captain walks out, and he has this coffee cup, and he holds it up in the air, and he, with all the emotion in the world, he said, the river's working. And I look back at him, and it just mm -hmm. really, it was a very hot, hot day, 100 and something degrees, right. soaking wet, and, I, and, I, and immediately I felt this kind of chill run up and down my body, and I thought, I saw every, and I, I looked around, and I saw all the activity, mm -hmm. uh, all the tugs, you know, the barges, sure. a lot of work going on, and you could see his whole life in that one sentence, you know, and uh, it immediately moved me, and I said, I got to write that song, and uh, it worked out pretty good so far. I think it's one of the highlights on the record for yes. me. How about Mississippi Minute and Highway 61? They uh, kind of go back to your roots a little bit, don't yeah, they? Yeah, how'd you even hear though? There's no hidden tracks. You're not supposed to get to leave those. Leave it to me. I like leave it. it to me. I like it. You know what? It was. It. You know. But this is my first record to produce uh -huh. officially. Yeah. But Mississippi Minute uh, was like one of the first little things I did on this little box that I own. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was fun. I wanted to leave it like that, so I said, Ah, it's not. Sonically good enough just to put on there as a regular track. I'll do that. Highway 61 was a, a late uh, song, uh, acoustic vocal. That's all it was, a little shaker. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, you know what, I'll cut it full full throttle on the next mm -hmm. record. But put those on there because I felt like it really uh, gave... Once this, song, once this record hits uh, cut 10, I wrote this little prelude called Home. Okay. And it all turns Mississippi Delta from there on. Takes you home. You know, we spend our entire lives on the road yes. in other people's environment, in their home. Right. And I feel like as an artist, a la Bruce Springsteen, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, you should be able to take people into your world 
more than just a songwriter about your life and where mm -hmm. what it looked like and smelled like and sure. the emotions of where you grew up and i think they know more about you that, that's the way i do it let's talk about flatlands because we're going to show you don't know a thing and as soon as you tell me about flatlands another song on that on that your oh, album. flatlands is, is uh it's a crowd pleaser is it's it? it's the one that kind of gets us all revved up uh uh, it's the uh, first time uh, I really officially did that song was in 1990, the Delta Blues Festival. Okay. Uh, I did it for uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan's tribute wow. with the late great son Thomas. Right. And uh, it was uh, that's when I walked off the stage and Albert King uh, made some comments to me uh, that have stuck with me forever. And that's what's on the back of me. You pull the Indianola record out and I, right. I talk about what he said. Wow. All these years later, um, the song finally made its way on the record. It's been one of those songs where I took some courses out, put some words in. Yeah. You know, it's been a work in progress, but uh, mm -hmm. it's worked out really good. It works out good. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a break and put you to work, but tell me about something you don't know or think. Tell me where it was filmed and how long it took, you know. And what's you in Nashville? A, Nashville, and you have what's his name in there? My buddy John Daly. There you go. Beats the stew out of a golf ball. He's yeah. uh, He represents life to me in its truest form. We became great friends last year at the Hootie and the Blowfish Monday after the Masters benefit. Uh, we both do a lot of benefits together. And, uh, and I feel like I've known him uh, my whole life now. Right. And he's got a great soul, great heart, and his life, to me, really depicted the, uh, and really just kind of really, to me, set the stage for uh, this song and what the video should have been about. Right. Uh, he's lived life. Uh, he's gone through, he's made his mistakes, and you don't really know how you're going to react to something mm -hmm. until you've lived it. You got it. And I felt like he'd be a great example in the game of golf as well. There's a lot of good songs on that album, Indian old album. Thank you. That people Thank should you. be, go, you know, Definitely pay attention to this one. You produced the entire album. What did the producer do, and is this the first time you wore that hat? I've worn it without getting, the, getting I guess, the title or the credit. Okay. I think any artist is always producing their own record, a real, a art, especially a songwriter artist. Uh, uh, I think that, that if you write your songs, you know where they came from. A great producer guides you down the right path. Right. Uh, I've always, uh, uh, you know, felt like that... Uh, Live, everybody was saying that you that it's better live than it is on record, and it's you know it's you know we love your record, but it's what's the difference? Mm -hmm. And I felt like you know what the difference is. Maybe I need to sit there when I write it, play, get my grooves. Cause mm -hmm. I kind of drive the band, okay. and I felt like maybe uh, I mean to make sure that my grooves down on tape and not somebody else's. And the song, you know, it, it's it comes from where it was born, and then everything else that that's built around it. Uh, you know, may make more sense and may people may go, oh, that's exactly what I hear live. And that's what people are saying. Absolutely. Now. This album differs, differs from your past album lyrically and musically, you think? I just think it's part of my journey. Okay. Uh, I, I think that it's, I think I'm more focused. Uh, and, and what I've learned is more than anything is I've learned to incorporate, uh, it's been a, a, that the Delta thing in the lyrics right, and stuff sure. a little more into, uh, you know, Springsteen in the Jersey Shore, you always yeah, knew it. In the back of, back of your mind or somehow yeah. he would slip it in, uh, in an emotion. Yeah. Uh, and, and that always drew me into him. So I, I think that that's what's happening to me. I'm just, I've been a little slower learner, obviously, than, than the boss. But, uh, and, and a guy like Bob Seger, who, who I've been out on tour with, those two guys were huge influences of mine. I read that. And to be on the road with them is, uh, with Bob, has been very surreal. Man, that's my next question. How does it feel to be on the road with... Oh, Bob Seger. It's crazy. I mean, it's we got the first seven shows and then we we were gone because that was all we had. And then right. we got a call back and said they wanted us the whole way. Wow! And especially on an home honor. shows, so we've gone from seven to over forty shows. And uh, yeah. it, you know, this is the biggest tour of the year. This is Pole Stars wow. number one tour. It's my first opportunity after all these years to have uh, a tour. And this, believe it or not, more than anything else mm. out of Nashville or anything, this tour makes yes. the most sense for me. Wow! You know, now how did the audience? warm up yeah, here. It's, it's, it's a perfect audience perfect for Perfect match, huh? Seems like the, so far so good. The critics have all said it's a perfect match. And, wow, and, that's uh, cool. And, and, you know, he was a big influence. Oof. So, I, I mean, I I felt like he, a guy like Bob was what the standard of a singer-songwriter artist right. was. That's what it was. He was so unique. Right. He sounded so different. His songs were so different. Right. They related to everybody. And right. I felt like, well, that's how good you got to be. If you can't be that good, then you, know, you don't need to do it. Wheel of Fortune. I spun it. You spun that big wheel? Heavy I, wheel. Is heavy it heavy? I got to start lifting weights again. <laughs> Get in <laughs> shape, huh? How do those women deal? Do they, they did all right. Up. You know, yeah. well, we spun for our group. But yeah. Thank goodness I had a really smart girl with me. Okay. And she's in college, and I think her mind's working a little better toward, uh -huh. you know. Uh, but, 
It was good. We did really well. Good. And uh, raised some money for good, good charity, and, and, and she raised she made some money. St. Cecilia's Foundation? Yeah, my, it's my... Well, that's your foundation. You started with your wife. Yeah, I got a lot of friends, like Gino Toretta, sure. uh, Heisman Trophy winner from yep. the Miami Hurricanes, uh, Hooting the Blowfish, all these guys. They have their own foundations. Jim McMahon from the Bears. Yeah. And Jim Kelly, I just did his out of Buffalo. Mm -hmm. um, we've all become great friends, uh, and John Daly as well. Yeah, sure. And they have their own foundations, and they give. They're constantly giving. Right. Morgan Freeman has his. Yeah. He's done so much for education. And I felt like it was uh, the time for me to, to, to step up and do a little more than just giving my time, actually be a, a part of it. And it's been a, a goal of my wife since we... You know, yeah. we've been together a long Good foundation. time. Good yeah. foundation. Let's take a break. Pick one of these videos and talk to me about it, and we're going to throw it in there. Huh, let's do, uh, you know what, let's do Waiting on Joe. It's, it, I, I feel like it'll be the greatest video that I've ever been a part of. Morgan Freeman was absolutely spectacular, and he helped me tell the true story of where I grew up. If memory serves me correct, that was the number one on CMT? It was. It was uh, up for all sorts of awards. Yes, and, it uh, was. And uh, it, it was a blessing, and it, it was, uh, it really gave, where I don't have to be me, no, Monday gave me a song. All right. Uh, waiting on Joe gave me a face. It gave me a there persona and let people know who I was. You feel hungry? How about some three bean chili? What kind three of recipe do you do for the Three bean chili. Egg? Three bean chili. That's what I yeah, say. Yeah, three bean and three meat. Three meat. All right. We put, uh, yeah, there's there's just, you know. Yeah. I, we kind of made it up one night and make the, the big well, old who's pot. Who's the we? Well, I guess, me and a, I guess me and my wife did this. We uh, love to cook. Yeah. And, uh. I better give credit to where it belongs. I all, actually, I'm just sitting there just watching. Mm -hmm. No, but actually, this is one of those recipes. I've always loved to make chili. Uh, and I just started thinking, you know, why use one meat and why use two or yeah. why use one bean? So I kind of mixed it up. There's some odd odd things in there besides, you know, I'm, I like mine spicy. I have to watch it because there's I have no literally no limit. I can go okay. all, as wow. far, far away up. as yeah. anybody will wow. let me go. And, and uh, so I always add a lot of the stuff later. But one of the keys is uh, a Recipe. buddy, a friend of mine told me coffee grinds, use coffee grinds, Ooh. like a tablespoon yeah. uh, at the end, uh, and then let it simmer for about 20 minutes after it really gels everything yeah. together. Yeah. And uh, and a, uh, a good kind of a sweet beer in there as well. Uh oh, good. there you go. You got to pour that in. You got, I want to make mention that's on the Crisco Country Favorites Recipe Book, now Volume 3. Volume 3? Volume 3. It's you good, can get that recipe enough. for yourself. Crisco Country Favorites Recipe Book, Volume 3, my I'm friends. glad I made a volume. There you go. He <laughs> made a volume 3. It's pretty good, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> hey, here's something that's coming up. There's something very close to you. The second crossing, the uh, Mississippi Delta's Landmark Bridge. You're going to narrate and host it, and it's a one-hour documentary coming up on the construction of that new bridge. You know, my, my dad was one of the first people to ever cross the old Mississippi River Bridge, okay. the one I grew up to. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a toll bridge back there. It crosses right in from Mississippi uh, into uh, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the Waiting on Joe video was right there when, when we were shooting, and then I could see them in the distance. Mm -hmm. They were starting to build this bridge. And then, all, and we used to camp out under the old one. Well, now, all of a sudden, I've been to the tip top of the cable expansion parts, which is 432 Get feet above the, uh, above the Mississippi. Wow. And uh, we filmed some stuff up there, and I remember looking down at the spot we used to camp out. It was very surreal. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's cool. It was different, and uh, it was moving to see my home from that spot wow. you know where i grew up yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of memories you know a lot of emotions we're going through and a, a bridge is a powerful thing i wrote a song on the way to the studio yes, called did. hello bridge um that that's going to be on there and then I, I got to use a lot of my songs that i grew up writing down there you know under that bridge or or thinking about that mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. where i grew up so uh i got some use out of them well that's good because i I think that's that's coming up that's coming up pretty soon on the television. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it. going to be like a made for PBS Good. special. There you go. A couple hours. I'm going to narrate it as well. Right. So it's, it, it, it's been a, it's been something dear to my heart. Well, very you're rewarding. Right, you lived it. Yeah, it's been very re rewarding for me. Let's talk about another subject. How about Americanized? Say that word for me. Americanized. Me. Americanizing Shelly. There, there you go. That's yeah, the word. Yeah, Americanizing Shelly. It's really. Uh, you know, I'm a, I, I love Bo Bridges. Yeah. You know, I loved him in Sea Biscuit. Oh, yeah. I loved him in the fabulous Baker Boys. And I saw that Bo was in this movie, and I was asked to maybe write uh, a, the, the, the closing song mm -hmm. for this movie mm -hmm. uh, during the trailer. Well, we ended up writing it. It really worked out. I did the duet with the star of the movie. I can't pronounce and, uh, it. Yeah, Namrata. And, uh, and we did it together. And uh, I was still writing the thing on the way on the plane. Wow. But it really worked out great. Uh, this great... Uh, artist, singer, songwriter named Jay Ferguson. Mm -hmm. He's the sure. guy that sang Goodbye Thunder Island, wrote that. Okay. Uh, he was in the band Spirit. Okay. And also, uh, he does all the music for like The Office. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it was great meeting him, and he, he produced the record on it. He let me bring a couple of my guys to keep it doing what right. I did. 
and uh, it worked out great. The movie comes out at the beginning of May, and we, okay. the vid the, cool. we ended up shooting a video wow. together, me and her. Good. So hopefully uh, we'll Dancing get some video clips. Yeah. That's the name of well, the song. The, I, I originally named it something else. They wanted it to sound a little more happy. I'm always about pain and stuff. So, oh, okay. Uh, I think mine was just a matter of freedom, and they and they she said uh, she wanted to name it that just a little because the movie's a romantic comedy. They felt like the song needed to be a lighter, and I said, all right, well, it's your movie. I want to make mention this is the first recorded collaboration between a country music artist and a star of the India film industry. It is known as it Bollywood. Was. It, and the song has got a very global appeal to it, I think, meaning uh, everybody that hears it says that. I mean, that wasn't something that I made up, but, but I keep hearing it, and it does. It's, it's, uh, it's very uh, every, everywhere music, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it, where, how it fits. Website. Tell everybody where you can see www.steveazar.com, and uh, we're going to have a whole new website launched. Very, very good. excited about it in the next, uh, in the next uh, four and a half, five weeks, good. so it's going to be good. really good, a whole, whole new deal. A lot of success in the future, my Thank friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. A lot of success in the kind. future with your new album in the Ola.